Welcome back to another edition of Living Simply and Fun. Today we're going to be talking for a minute about uh, a movie, we, a movie we are going to review tonight. We rented a movie for 99 cents on Amazon Prime, mainly because, well, for one, it was 99 cents, and two, we were interested in it. Now, many of you may be familiar, if you're tuning into this, with the Left Behind series by uh, Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins. Um... Uh, and uh, there was, a, a, you might be familiar with the Kirk Cameron movies. I think those came out in, uh, what was it, about uh, 1990, 89, somewhere in there. I don't know. Uh, it, it was 90s, I think. Um, she's going to look it up real quick. So, uh, it came out in 2000. The first one came out in 2000. So, then, uh, I didn't know it was that late. Then there was the second one in 2005. Well, we don't care about the dates. And for then most. the third one was something else. So, so, it came out in 2000, and uh, Kirk Cameron was only able to make the first three movies. Um, and then uh, Nicolas Cage got pulled in to do the first one. Now, apparently, it's only gotten like two to three star ratings. And I can't agree with that. It, uh, the first movie, I think, had between three and four star ratings. Uh, and the book series has like five star ratings. And this was actually closer to the book than in Kirk Cameron's. And also, this had much more action. Jordan Sparks made the movie flow very well. Same with the guy who ends up playing uh, the Watch reporter, uh, Buck Williams. Um, and, uh, Nicolas Cage wasn't all that impressive, but, you know, he still did a better job in his film. So, uh, the cin uh, cinematography was great. The action sequences were far better. It obviously had a higher budget, and yet it only made $20 million when it came worldwide. out in the box office worldwide. Uh, and... There's no reason for that. This movie was a solid five stars. Uh, if you're a fan of the books or if you're a fan of the uh, first movie. Um, I'm not actually a fan much of uh, uh, LaHaye Jenkins and their work. But what I do find, though, is that the movie was actually very enjoyable. Um, and you're, have you got any thoughts on this before I talk the whole time? I think... The Kurt Cameron movies bombed, and Lee and Jenkins, in my opinion, pulled it out. But now they're talking about having the cast return for book two through like ten, I think it is. Hold on, book two at ten or eleven. They don't want to go any higher because, uh, um, let's see, this one's, uh, uh, yeah, they don't want to do book, uh, le uh book. 11 or 12, because that's when Jesus comes in, and they don't want to go that far from my reports reading. But they want to get all the way through the uh, rapture, which in the first movie it said there's seven years of rapture. So, anyways, yeah, if you don't know the basic story of it and you're curious about that, uh, this is a spoiler alert at this point. Turn it off um, if you don't want to see any more of it. There's my. I'll give you our rating before we do that. So, anyways, uh, my rating, as I said, was uh, five out of five. I agree with Aaron. Five uh, out of five. Out of ten, it would be maybe a nine point five out of ten. Exactly um, nine and a half out of ten. And I just want to say that also the price point on Amazon Prime was well worth the dollar seven the, tax. The acting was good. The uh, the casting was exceptional. The cinematography was good. The music was good. There was one point I actually didn't like the music, but... Um, I want to say Leah Thompson did good for the little role that she did completely on uh, this movie. So, anyways, now to the spoiler part. Okay, so now turn off if you don't, you want, don't want a spoiler. spoiler. Um, the basic uh, premises of the book and the movie is that... Uh, this girl, the daughter of Nicolas Cage in the movie, Chloe Steele. Uh, she's coming back from college. Now, 
In the original book, I don't believe she was coming back from college, but because she had her own vehicle there. And, well, that was um, in the movie. I just don't remember. In, the, in the movie, she didn't have her own vehicle. She came in by plane to meet her dad for her birthday. And uh, he ends up taking off with the stewardess that he's having a, an, affair an affair with. And she doesn't know that he's married because he takes his ring off and hides it in his car. And uh, they're going to go and have a week in uh, London and watch a U2 concert. And so he takes off for his birthday with her. Uh, and the mother is really hung up on the Bible and has become a bit of a Bible thumper and has tried to force it down the throat of her family. So she's pushing her husband away with this, pushing her daughter away with this, <coughs> and she's, you know, just trying to save everyone, in her opinion. Uh, in the movie, the Kirk Cameron version, let me just give you a spoiler. In the movie... The son, Raimi, is also a Bible thumper because Chloe says, well, what are you doing? You, you should be doing this. And she said, and he said, well, I'm following, uh, I'm being a good Christian, following uh, the pastor and all this stuff. And then essentially, uh, while the father's in air, the rapture occurs and people go disappearing mm -hmm. off the plane. And then his plane has mechanical failures and stuff. And he's got to land it while they're trying to figure out what's going on and keep tempers down. And the daughter is trying to find her brother because her brother disappeared in her arms. And, and somehow she doesn't understand how he just vanished out of her arms and she's left holding his clothes. So and a backpack. She, she goes looking all over the place and every ambulance she sees, she somehow thinks her brother's in it, which I kind of thought into was the, uh, She breaks into a hospital to see if he's there, finds a person who says that all the children disappeared across the world. And uh, then she heads home and finds that her mother's disappeared. In the shower. While in the shower. and Just uh, found her jewelry. Exactly. And then... Uh, then the father's trying to contact to see if anybody's everybody's okay or whatever. Uh, they finally get in contact, and she helps him land the plane while she's on the ground. Uh, and it's, it's very action-paced in this movie. It was not so much action-paced in the Kirk Cameron version. Um, and this one, I think, is far more entertaining. Exactly. And that's something that I want to say. It was a really, really good movie. You know, and me being religious, I thought, you know, 99 cents, it can't be, it could be bombed because, you know. They it would be a movie that I would think about possibly adding to my collection, but only if the other ones come out and they actually wrap it up nicely at the end of them. Uh, I, I really didn't like the fact that Cameron's ended at book three and it left everything open and it, it was just getting into the meat of the story at that point. Uh Oh, and I think Carpathia I, had already come Yeah, forward, Carpathia came first, but, forth in the first one, remember? Because Hattie Durham, the flight attendant, and this is a spoiler in Kurt Cameron's one, got a job through uh, Ray Steele, and, or no, not Ray Steele, Buck Williams, to work at the United Nations when Carpathia, the, um, uh, what is it called? The Cro Croatian? No, it's uh, that other one. Uh, a Romanian president who's the young first president of Romania or some stupid thing, becomes the entire president of the world. And he is the Antichrist. And right. No, that wasn't in this movie. So the other one actually uh, skipped ahead a bit into the second book. And then the second movie kind of took elements of the second and third book. And then the third one took some elements from the third book. And it, it was a mess, actually. And don't forget, Danny Glover was the president in it, and Danny Glover gave his own life knowing that Carpathia was the Antichrist. So he gave his life up. And for uh, it. I'll say this there, there's an uh, interesting circumstance, between, uh, which wasn't in the book, I don't believe. Also, cell phones are in this. There was no cell phones in the book. Uh, in fact, I don't think the daughter even helped land the plane. Because uh, there was no way for them. No, to he actually in the I don't in the book that. and in the first movie they tried to do it as best possible. Uh, he lands in uh, Chicago. That's where they live. They're in Chicago. Right. And we noticed a discrepancy. They didn't say it was Chicago this time, but there was New York plates everywhere, and we noticed the filming was in Louisiana. So, um, but moving on, I was trying to talk about some of the characters on the plane. They have a woman on there who's the wife of a football player. Uh, they have a... Uh, a gambling I, I hate to say it, but 
vertically challenged person who uh, is a gambler and he doesn't trust people and he's got an attitude towards them because he thinks everybody's looking at him and making fun of him all the time. So he's kind of just become a bully towards other people who want to assist Don't forget him. the then vertically challenged one after a Muslim. Then there's a Muslim guy on the plane, too, uh, who, of course, the, the midget guy goes after him, basically, and says it's all his fault, and it was a biological weapon or something, and he, he's trying to get into it with him throughout much of the uh, show. Uh, and... There's a point where the Muslim guy says, maybe now we should all pray. And he says, to what God? And the, the Muslim doesn't say anything. He says, basically, God, any God, you know, your God, my God, whatever. It doesn't matter. Pray. <laughs> and uh, so, anyways, uh, I thought that that was kind of unique. And then the, the wife of the football player, her kids disappeared. And, of course, she thinks that... It was an elaborate setup by her husband to kidnap the kid. Because he's a football player from the New York Jets. And the gambler found out and said, hmm, I'm going to make some Yeah, money. well, that's because he found out that he got injured while sitting in a hammock. And the dog knocked him out of the hammock. And he injured his shoulder. And they thought he'd be able to play. But if he injured his shoulder, he's not going to be 100%. So uh, he was going to uh, bet against that team. Um any, anyways. And then the U.S. and the air marshal, as you know, said, oh, you're a betting man. He says yes to the uh, midget. But the U.S. marshal is a Christian. Disappears. Disappear, and the guns left. To uh, of the course, the, the f wife of the football player, who I didn't expect to get the gun, ends up getting the gun, and she ends up blowing her top. And there's also a heroin addict on the plane who's like related to some guy famous, and then there's a financier on the plane who ends up having a rather touching speech about how his daughter was and how he knew her as a little girl and remembered this little desk in the dad's office. And oh, don't forget, the other thing is, is uh, in the financier is working with this Asian guy who's working with the Department of the well, Defense Department. Well, he took of interest in what the Asian guy was talking about because... His work's along the same lines, and he's sitting there like, ooh, insider information. So, um... And then, you know, the guy with the touching story talking about the death said he was more interested in making money than thinking about religious, so... So, know, and, and of course, in the old movie, they didn't have the rules about uh, guns getting onto planes. Uh, it would have been much easier to bring one with you onto a plane back in 2000. Uh, you also would have had, uh, and when the books were written, it would have been even easier. Um, and, uh, they didn't have the locked out cabin. Kids were still invited at 2000 to come up and see the cockpit. Now that doesn't happen, and they have little touch pads and electronics to get in. I did see a discrepancy, though, in the movie, since I'm giving a spoiler, which, Aaron, I don't know if you picked up on it, but somehow... The um, reporter became friends with the pilot and had the code to get into the door. Uh, Remember, no, he was he, sitting there no, like this. No, he started pressing the buttons, but he didn't know the code, and then he got buzzed in. If you actually notice, uh, um, Nicholas, Nicholas Cage. Cage goes and buzzes a man. After looking at this camera, it's at the door. Yeah, because he could see whoever's at the door, and he decided that this guy could come in. Because uh, he was really pivotal in trying to help everybody in the back to stay calm. And he was investigating the whole thing and, and already said, had a connection with his daughter. Yeah, and, and he said he's uh, thinking of his daughter, which blew Nicolas Cage's character away, Ray Steele. But yeah, it's like my daughter he, made that big of an impression on you. And, and the first thing she does is run up to the, the reporter over her dad. So I got to say that uh, I'm looking forward to the second part. It's Caprice. Uh, so... Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this comes out. I understand it's being crowdfunded or whatever. Uh, I really hope that they get the funding for the other movies. Okay, so, is that it? Is it a wrap-up? A wrap-up? Yeah, the, uh, that's it. Five stars. And uh, if you stayed through all this, uh, thanks for watching it, and sorry if we spoiled anything, but some people want those spoilers. They want to know what it's all about first.
Please so. add and subscribe if you like. Please post comments, leave feedback, suggestions. Thank you, and may God bless you all.